military calm took place in Aruba. The event looks towards how to better integrate the disabled into the community. Plus, in today's lifestyle segment, we'll discuss the three ingredients to living a longer life. And an album launch this Friday takes place in a historical venue. Find out why later on in the show. 15 on 15 starts right now. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Yantu Liu. Aruba hosted Carry Calm Wednesday morning. The goal of Carry Calm is to work towards better integrating the disabled into the community. Carry Calm was hosted at the Renaissance Convention Center. Data, statistics and information regarding the disabled population on the island was revealed. A part of this uh, Arubian community consists of people, persons with disability. According to the census 2010, nearly 7,000 people reporting having a disability with sight, hearing, mobility, cognition, self-care, or communication. This represents almost 7% of the population of Aruba. Compared to the world, this might seem small because according to the World Health Organization, uh, there was a 15% prevalence of disability worldwide. It's still important that this group also feels included and empowered in the Aruban society. A client of Favi stepped up and shared her experience, living on the island being visually impaired. To her, Aruba is just not built with the disabled in mind. Being a person with a disability myself, I would like to talk on behalf of the thousands of people in Aruba with all sorts of disabilities. And I can tell you that there is a lot of work to be done to accommodate the basic needs of people with disabilities in our community. A deficient infrastructure makes most streets and buildings absolutely inaccessible for people with disabilities. This makes us very dependent on others to get by, or we lead a very isolated life. The time is now. Another issue brought forward during the Carry Calm event is the limited education opportunities that are available for the disabled. Available data has revealed that the educational level in Aruba with a disability is significantly lower than people without disabilities. What are the possible causes of this? Is it because the schools are not adequately accessible to people with disabilities? Therefore, reducing the chances of people with a disability to get a higher degree or do other um, factors play a role in this fact? Policymakers are being asked to work together with employers to encourage fair opportunity of employment for all. At present, one of the main challenges of people with a disability is to find and maintain an adequate job. I can assure you that people with disabilities, they have a lot to offer. So it is very important for the government to create the right incentive for employers to encourage employers to employ people with disabilities and immediate action is necessary. To and on that note, we will be right back. Take a look to see what is coming up next. Welcome back from the break. I've got the ingredients to living a longer life. Apparently, sushi, vegetables, and green tea make up the fountain of youth. The Office for National Statistics found that out of women living in 21 countries, Japanese women have the longest lifespans. 
Japanese women are expected to live up to 86.4 years old. By comparison, the life expectancy for English females is 82.8 years. As for men, it is a little bit different. Icelandic men came in first in terms of longevity at age 80.8, while Japanese men were third at age 79.9. Now, you may be wondering why do Japanese women come out on top in those regards? Well, researchers think it might have something to do with Japanese dining culture. You may want to work more vegetables into your meal and find a green tea that you enjoy drinking and indulge in plenty of sushi. The oldest woman in the world, who is 116, says sushi is her favorite type of food. How dirty do you think money is? Well, one of these dollar bills can contain up to at least 3,000 different microbes. Study authors hypothesize that paper money might be a common platform for human bacteria interaction. Swab samples that were taken from the front and the back of the money were taken from dollar bills to see what types of bacteria existed. They discovered thousands of microbes from the mouth, probably when people counted by licking their fingers. And then skin bacteria was also found, perhaps from acne, and even some unidentifiable ones that weren't in their databases were also found. Experts say these findings weren't surprising. These types of microbes are found everywhere. With that being said, though, researchers say you don't need to worry about the paper in your wallet. The work they did just opens up discussion for health departments to analyze currency as another mode of transferring disease. Still, Experts say wash your hands after handling money the same way you would after using the restroom. Now, there is something magical and interesting about someone preparing tiny burritos for a tiny hamster and then serving them in a tiny restaurant. Check out all this tininess. The video is indeed random, but very cute and interesting indeed as well. On that note, we will be right back. Take a look to see what is coming up next. Aruba is all about celebrating its local talent. Data Panic, which has garnered success on the island, is now integrating traditional heritage and culture into their music. This is something the Historical Museum applauds, especially since they are trying to gauge Generation X and Y. An album launched this Friday at Fort Zalman ties in music, talent, youth, and culture all together. Data Panic is known for producing Aruban flavored music with a modern twist. The artists have been working very hard, and the band is set to launch their latest creation.、Um, this album is called、uh, Fuente, meaning source in Papimento. The whole album is in Papimento.、Um, the inspiration for this album is、um, uh, actually. Aruban music and heritage,、um, the, the looking for this identity, music identity.、Um, also, big inspiration to this are two pioneers in the music、uh, for for the island. Is one of them is Vicente Ras. He plays a traditional、uh, percussion called the tambu with traditional rhythms, and、um, also Alfonso Bucci Bukhout, who plays the kahi orgel,、um, which is、uh, in English I think they call it tingilingi box. <laughs> Um, uh, which is,、uh, you know, they, they're really the craftsmen behind these instruments, the pioneers, and they inspired me、um, to look at this uh, uh, heritage, musical heritage, and get inspired by it.、Um, obviously, doing my own thing with it, which is a bit more modern. 
For those who are unfamiliar with Data Panic and Michael Lampa, the artist provides a bit of information as to what they are all about. I would call it uh, modern criollo music, or I would say, you know, sometimes I call it like uh, uh, in Papimendo we have the typical word, you know, meaning the traditional uh, side of things. Uh, um, it, it's, a, it's, it's a combination of a tradition in a modern context. This is the best way I can put it because there's so many different elements. Um, I would say really check us out on, on datapanicofficial.com and listen for yourself to see you know, what you make of it. Uh, one thing is for sure, there's you know, a, a nice vibe with it that we always get from our fans and that we give back and it, you can hear it through the music. An album launch is not a typical event that Fort Zeltman hosts, but the venue is allowing for the event because it goes along with the goal of the museum which is to attract Generation X and Y. We're very happy to be able to collaborate with the Data Panic Project. This is a, a project that actually fits in our goals, in our vision. Um, as per 2013, we as a museum are trying to connect more with our public, but we're also looking for uh, maybe a part of the public that is not reaching us yet, and that's the, the younger generations um, mostly. So we started in January with uh, the, small, uh, the smaller kids, between 10 and 15, but this is a very nice demographic. The fans of Data Panic are between the ages of 16 to 35 and even older. So we are happy to have them here at the museum. The new music Michael Lampa and his band are bringing to the public with their album incorporates traditional heritage and cultural context into the lyrics. It allows the youth to think about their Aruban roots. This is something Vort Zoutman supports. And it ties in very well with what we believe in as a museum. We believe in not only sell, um, making sure that people know about our heritage, but also to trespass it. And trespass it in a way that the younger generations also can absorb it and, 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 and identify with. And that's exactly what the Data Panic is doing with this project. The album launch sets to take place this Friday night starting at 9 p.m. at Vort Zeltman. Pre-sale tickets are 35 florins. The band is expecting the event to be sold out, so keep that in mind. And also, be assured that the venue is smaller, so Michael encourages the public to get their tickets early. Tickets are available at Fort Zellman and Bula Surf Shop at the Royal Plaza. That is our show for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back here with a brand new edition of 15 on 15, starting Friday night at 7.15 p.m. right here on Channel 15 ATV. We will see you then.